Hi guys, this is Mayur Vahad. In this video, we are going to discuss about the observer pattern. So let's get started. Observer pattern is a behavioral design pattern. Observer pattern is a pattern in which an object called the subject maintains a list of its dependents called observers and notifies them automatically of any change in its state. The observer pattern defines a one to many dependency between objects. Subject owns the state and controls it. So there is one subject with data. The observers on the other hand use the state even if they don't own it. There are many observers and they rely on the subject to update them automatically when the state changes. Observer pattern basically helps to define a subscription mechanism. Dependent objects can even decide at runtime whether they want to be kept informed. So objects can subscribe and unsubscribe during runtime. A newsletter or comic series subscription is a good way to visualize the pattern. So let's say a customer is very interested in the newest version of a comic series, which should become available in the store very soon. The customer could visit the store every day and check product availability. But while the product has still not arrived, most of these trips would be pointless. Using observer pattern, we can define a subscription mechanism where customers can subscribe and whenever the product is available, they will get notified of the availability. When they are not interested in the product anymore, they can unsubscribe to avoid the spam. Once they unsubscribe, they won't be notified anymore. As you'll discover, there are a few different ways to implement the observer pattern, but most revolve around a class design that includes subject and observer interfaces. Now, step one is we declare the observer interface, which should have a notify method. All observers implement the same observer interface and the subject communicates with all the observers only via this interface. Now, why are we having an observer interface? Simple because we always program to an interface. Real apps might have many different types of observer classes that are all interested in tracking the state change of the same subject class. Now, coupling the subject to all of those classes will be a very bad object oriented design as it won't be accessible and it will violate the open close principle. How? Think that we might not even know about some of the observer classes beforehand. And how will we accommodate if a new observer class is introduced in the future? Now, step two is we declare the subject interface and declare methods for adding an observer to the subscription list, removing it from the subscription list and updating all the observers about the state change. Now, why subject interface? Now, our app might have several different types of subjects and we want all types of observers to be compatible with all types of subjects. Now, usually the code to basically add an observer as a subscriber, to remove an observer from the subscription list and to update an observer looks the same for all types of subjects. So the obvious place to put it is in an abstract class derived directly from the subject interface. However, if you are applying the pattern to an existing class hierarchy, or you want different implementation of adding an observer, removing an observer and updating an observer, you can consider an approach based on composition. So we basically put the subscription logic into a separate object, let's say an event manager object and make all subjects use it using composition. Now let's discuss the implementation of the subject and observer interface and the concrete classes. So in subject interface, we had three methods, register observer, remove observer and update observers. So register observer method will basically add the observer passed as an argument to the observer list. This list we have defined in the subject abstract class, which basically implements the subject interface. So this method basically means the observer has subscribed to listen to any change in the state of the subject object. Now remove observer method will basically remove the observer passed as an argument from the observer list. If the observer is already 
a listener to the subject now this is equivalent to unsubscribing update observers method basically updates the observers if the state of the subject object is changed now it loops the observer list and calls the notify method this notify method was declared in the observer interface so basically for each observer object present in the observer list we will call the notify method and pass the context data now let's look at the notify method of the observer interface the concrete observers will implement the notify method declared in the observer interface observers would need some context data about the event it can be passed as an argument of the notify method but do you think it is wise to pass the context data as an argument this is some area of application that might change in future if it is changed let's say the type of context is changed or some more new data needs to be passed to the observer then it would require changes in many parts of the code now there is another option which java provided observer pattern library uses in this the subject passes itself as an argument in the notify method upon receiving a notification the observer can fetch any data directly from the subject object using the subject getters so design principle here says that we should always aim for loosely coupled design between the objects that interact now what is coupling coupling is basically the degree of dependence between the software modules it basically measures how closely connected two modules are so basically if coupling is low that means the modules are basically not much dependent on each other and they are kind of independent so when two objects are loosely coupled they can interact with very little knowledge of each other observer pattern is primarily based on the object oriented principle of low coupling subject and observers are loosely coupled with each other only thing the subject knows about the observer is the observer interface we can add or remove observers any time without any change in the subject in fact we can also replace an observer at run time with another observer object and the subject won't be affected at all we can also introduce new observer classes without any change in the subject class to introduce a new observer class all we have to do is implement the observer interface in the new class and register it as an observer in the subject class we can also modify either the subject or the observer class independently without affecting the other memory leaks in the observer pattern also known as the lapsed listener problem okay so before talking about the lapsed listener problem let's understand what is a weak reference a weak reference is basically a reference that isn't strong enough to force an object to remain in the memory a weakly referenced object is cleared by the garbage collector when it's weakly reachable by weakly reachable we mean that object has neither strong nor soft references pointing to it and the object can only be reached by the weak reference the observer pattern can cause memory leaks if the subject holds the strong references to the observer objects suppose an object which is also an observer is no longer strongly referenced in the code and used anywhere in the code now the leak happens when that observer object fails to unsubscribe from the subject and we have a strong reference to that observer object since that observer is no longer strongly referenced anywhere in the code except the subject class and that observer object is no longer used anywhere in the code it should ideally be garbage collected right as that object is no longer required but the subject will not let it go since the subject still holds a strong reference to that object and the subject will keep on sending the notifications to that object that observer object will still be in the observers list maintained by the subject which will prevent it from being garbage collected as long as the subject is alive and that time period could be until the end of application this memory leak problem can be prevented by using weak references to the observer objects if you have any doubt regarding whatever we have discussed in this video 
or if you think that I have missed something, feel free to comment down below and I'll try to address it. Till then, take care. Bye bye. See you in the next video.